And in the Spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain, and showed me the holy city Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At the time that I'm recording this video, we're coming up on the sixth Sunday of the Easter season, and we've been meditating in these Sundays on the resurrection of Jesus, the Paschal Mystery, the suffering, the death, the resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus. And the gift of the Easter season, or the gift of the Paschal Mystery, is something that has to touch our lives and change us. There are two great gifts that the Paschal Mystery brings to us. The Paschal Mystery, by the way, is the mystery of Christ, the suffering, death, and resurrection. Two of these great gifts that come to us that we see in the Easter season are number one, the resurrection of Christ. And the second one is the reality of heaven. The resurrection of Christ is something that affected his apostles tremendously. And when you read the book, The Acts of the Apostles, you see the effect of the resurrection. You see the apostles will endure all manner of hardships and they'll do tremendously courageous things with their life, with their teaching, with their leadership of the people, with their building up of the church by the grace of the Holy Spirit. The resurrection always inspires them. You know, when you read the Acts of the Apostles, there's so many problems that the apostles of Jesus face that if you face them yourself, you might say, boy, I should just quit. This whole operation is a big disaster. But something keeps moving them on. Something inspires them mightily to keep going on. And that's the resurrection of Jesus. And the resurrection of Christ gives them a spirit of Alleluia. It enables them to praise God and to trust in Him even when everything before them seems to be falling apart. They are enabled to lead the people to know Jesus Christ and to follow Him. The apostles will tackle minor issues and even have some disagreements. They'll face major issues and they'll face all manner of sufferings, persecutions, and even martyrdom. But the resurrection of Christ gives them this power, this interior spirit of inspiration that moves them to continue on the mission of Christ. They are now aware, because of the resurrection of Jesus, that nothing, nothing compares to the glory of resurrection of Christ. That whenever they face all kinds of sufferings and evil itself, it is small compared to the power of Jesus. They actually can perceive that the power of the spirit of evil is very weak compared to the power of Jesus in His resurrection. And they're aware that they're working on this. They're working on the resurrection, that they're working on a mission that is victorious. And this is a lesson for us. We have to think about the resurrection of Christ. You know, when you think about Good Friday, if you're in a church and you see the Stations of the Cross and you think about the Passion of Christ, there's so much evil surrounding Jesus. You have betrayal, you have lies, you have violence, you have murder and death, and you have fear itself. And it seems that evil is winning, but the resurrection of Jesus is like an explosion of goodness it seems that evil has destroyed everything, but goodness wins in the resurrection of Christ. And that's what inspires the apostles and should inspire us. We've got to remember the resurrection. That's why we go to Mass every Sunday. That's why Sunday is a day of the Lord. That's why we meditate upon the resurrection in the mysteries of the rosary. And that's why we have in the churches, we have the Paschal Candle, which reminds us of the risen Lord Jesus and the light that shines in the darkness in His resurrection. We've got to remember the resurrection and have that Alleluia spirit that moves us to go on with joy. You see, every one of us right now is going through some, probably, some difficult situation. It could be with yourself or with someone you know and love. 
I remember when I was in the seminary preparing to become a deacon, I had a good friend who was a permanent deacon, and, and uh, he told me, he said, when you preach and you prepare your sermons, remember that there is someone in your church or in your assembly or wherever you're preaching who has a broken heart. There's someone whose world is shattered. And you know, you might be that someone. You might, ha are enduring, might be enduring a broken relationship or a terrible tragedy or suffering or, you know, just some constant problem in your life and things you're worried about. Well, you've got to remember the resurrection of Christ. You need to allow the gift of resurrection to be your gift and allow it to heal and mend your broken heart. The apostles, you know, if they could give their personal stories of their every single day experiences, probably had broken hearts tons of times, but they allowed the resurrection of Christ to be their new heart, to inspire them to keep going on with joy. Our joy comes not from things going our way and life being easy. It comes from Christ and His resurrection. And so we want to accept this gift of the resurrection of Jesus and remember it, that in Him, goodness stronger, in fact more real, than suffering, evil, and death, and sin. Now, another gift of the Paschal Mystery of Jesus is the gift of heaven. And we hear about heaven in the reading I read to you from the book of Revelation, where St. John talks about a sort of vision of heaven that he has. And the Apostles know about the reality of heaven, because Jesus taught them a lot about the Kingdom of Heaven. And that actually enables the Apostles to have hope. You see, hope means that you're looking forward to something, something good, something that you know is coming to you, but you don't have it yet. Well, the biggest hope we can have is eternal life in Heaven. And that inspires the Apostles to have hope. And one of the lessons we get from the reality of heaven, which is open to us by Jesus in His Paschal Mystery, is that following Jesus Christ is about something eternal. That we're working on an eternal reality. That Christ is not just some historical figure from the past who's stuck in the past, and we just got to try to remember Him as best and as strongly as we can. But He's with us now and that He's open for us eternity. And the Apostles are aware that they're working on something eternal. That's why when all kinds of persecutions break out, they keep going. They keep at it. My mentor, one of my mentors in the priesthood who just passed away recently, Father James Flanagan, the founder of the Society of Our Lady of the Trinity, if you ask him, Father Flanagan, where are you from? He would say, I'm from heaven, and I'm trying to get back there. And he was serious, because, you know, when we're baptized, we're made citizens of heaven. Heaven is our true home. And so we want to have this spirit of hope, of thinking that as we go through this brief life's journey, that we're moving towards eternity when we follow Jesus. Now, hope means that we desire heaven as our happiness. That is key, because everything in this world can give us a little bit of happiness, but ultimately falls short. We need some happiness that is permanent and is not threatened by anything, and that's eternal life in heaven. And that should move us to live in a way pleasing to God, because I don't want to just believe in heaven, but not live for heaven. Some people live for hell by living in all kinds of sin and refusing in their arrogance to repent and accept the gift of divine mercy. We got to live for heaven, which means we have to avoid sin and be faithful to the gospel. When you do that, then you have real hope. But you know, there's something else that is very interesting about the reading from the book of Revelation. And it has to do with relationship. The relationship of Christ to His Apostles is eternal. You see, it says in this book of Revelation that the names of the twelve Apostles of the Lamb of God, Jesus, were written in heaven. 
So that means the relationship that he began with the apostles when he saw them fishing in their boat and said, Come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. That relationship, that friendship that Christ began is not temporary. It's eternal. And it also means that the relationships that the apostles have amongst themselves are also eternal. And this is something that we should really allow to inspire us now, is that our relationship to Christ is forever and ever. So when we devote ourselves to Him, we're devoting ourselves to an eternal friendship. And we have to grow in this relationship. But it also means that the relationships we have with others are also eternal. You know, we say that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and He is. But He's not only that. He's the Lord and Savior of our relationships as well. And we are facing, as we get older in our life's journey, the loss of loved ones, and especially people that we have needed, and it gives us a great sorrow. Almost sometimes we feel that the, the foundation upon which we have been standing is pulled out beneath us when, when we lose someone. And it seems like this is a constant reality in life in this world. In fact, it is. And in the face of this sorrow, we don't know what to do. But we have to remember Jesus and the fact that He creates relationships that are eternal in Him. And so our relationships with those we have loved and have needed are also eternal. They're not just memories. They're eternal. That's why we pray for those who have died. And we respond to death with hope and with entering more deeply into the mystery of Jesus Christ. Because in Him is the salvation that we seek for ourselves and for our relationships. And so, brothers and sisters, as we move through the Easter season, we want to open our hearts to these gifts of the Paschal Mystery, the resurrection of Christ, which gives us joy, showing us that goodness has won and will always win. We just have to live in that goodness. And we want to accept the reality of heaven, and this gives us hope. May these gifts of the Paschal Mystery of Jesus dwell within our hearts. God bless you.